So this is my coaching studio. This is where I, on a daily basis, give lessons still here at the Forest of Arden. This is Hit Golf Academy, uh, where I work alongside Alistair and Kevin. And today's video is going to be what is in my golf bag. I have not done one of these videos before, never done a what's in the bag. Um, but a few months back, I did a video about my fitting that I had for these clubs at Wentworth um, and asked you to let me know if you'd like to see a what's in the bag. Many of you said you would, so here we are doing this video. So if you haven't seen that original video about the fitting process, I'll link that in the corner. Um, but as I said, so we're gonna go through what's in the bag. Now the reason I wanted to do this is because it links back to the fitting process. I've got some data through Trackman because I wanna tell you exactly, you know, why the clubs in my bag are the way they are and how that helps my ball flight. And it kind of just highlights the point that if you get yourself a really good fitting, it can make a huge difference to your game. And certainly I've seen a big difference in performance and, you know, the shots on the course based on the fitting process I had at Wentworth, Wentworth I should say, with Mark. So let's start with the putter. So I have got the Spider X putter in the golf bag. Um, now slightly different to last year's model um, in terms of what I've gone for. I had the Spider last year, which was the kind of very distinctive red color. They've changed the color scheme this year. Um, the whole design is a little bit more compact. It's not quite as big a footprint when you look down on it. But this year, what I've done is I've actually gone for an alignment aid, which I didn't last year. Last year I had the completely clear blank um, putter, which I kind of liked, um, but I found using this, I did actually like this alignment aid here, um, as well as the also the white alignment aid which comes on the putter of standards. So that's the Spider X. Um, I've got the same neck. Uh, I've got the same length as I had before. So really, it doesn't look and feel a huge amount of different. I'm just much better at aligning this putter up. Um, I tend to use a line on the ball. Um, so when I've read the break, I put the line on where I want the ball to start, and then very simply, sit, putter sits behind the ball line those two lines up and I'm good to go and I get the, I get much better alignment with that. So that's the Spider X putter. And then we're gonna go into the wedges. Now, the wedges is a few differences. I have got the, I've got 52, 56 and 60 all in the TaylorMade high toe. Now the lofts are the same as I had last year, but last year it was only the 60 I had in the high toe and the 52 and the 56 I had in the milled grind. Um, I've been really, really happy with that 60 high toe. Love the way it looks, love the way it feels. Um, so because of that, I've just kind of matched it through. I just preferred the idea of having three wedges at the same rather than going high toe and then into the milled grind. Not really any performance benefits to that, but just for me, more visually, I'm looking down at the same kind of wedge each time. Um, the 56 and the 60, the grooves go right the way to the toe and right the way to the top edge. But the 52, we get that kind of more traditional kind of groove pattern, um, which again, I prefer maybe the grooves going out to the toe didn't quite look right in the 52, and I'd probably agree it would look a little bit strange. So normal groove pattern on the 52, 56, 60, we see the grooves moving right the way to the toe. So really like those. Now, the interesting thing there was, um, last year in the wedges, I had X100 shafts throughout the golf clubs. Now, Mark kind of pointed out, uh, which makes a lot of sense really, that with these clubs, if I hit that 56 degree as hard as I can full out, the X100 would be a great shaft for me. Um, but I don't often hit those shots. You know, I hit lots of full shots, but I hit lots of half shots and three quarter shots. Um, and so what he was kind of saying was if you put that X100 shaft in, it works on the full swing. So as you start to rein those in and maybe hit some half to three quarter shots, the shaft can feel a little bit strong, don't get a lot of feel through it. So what we've done is actually gone for the same shaft, the X100, but he has soft stepped them. Um, so they play a little bit softer. Um, and I've noticed um, not a huge difference in performance, but the feel is a little bit better off the club. It doesn't feel quite as harsh as they maybe did before with those X100s. Um, there's a little bit more feel, a bit more give in the shafts. And certainly when I'm around the greens, it does feel a little bit better. And hopefully that's going to be a benefit to me in terms of feel and my touch. So same shafts, but just a different um, way of stepping those in. So I've got that in 52, I say 56 and 60. So into the irons. And I'm using the P760 irons. 
Um, last year I was using the P770, so very, very similar. The 760 refers to the blade length, so these are slightly narrower, so they do sit a little bit tidy behind the ball. They're a slightly different finish. They were a chrome finish. The last year was a bit more of a matte finish. Um, love the way they look, but they're quite a difference in performance, and we're going to go through that because this was really in the fitting, the biggest change that we saw with the irons. With my 770s, as soon as I was hitting those, straight away Mark noticed that the spin was really low. Um, now, I've got some data on the screen here. The data that you see is that I've just captured in my coaching bay. I used the Academy range balls, and these range balls spin very, very low anyway. So we're looking at a comparison as opposed to actually what the spin number is. But you can see what I was getting with my 770s, the spin rate was pretty low, and we noticed this in the fitting. So although I was getting pretty good distance, the feel was good, when the ball was coming down, it was quite a shallow descent angle. Um, and so Mark straight away said that spin rate needed to be much closer to the kind of six, 7,000 number. So what we did, straight into the 760s, hit some shots, and he built these in the same spec. And we saw the same thing. We saw the spin was quite low. So what that really means is that it's not down to the clubs, it's my goal swing. And that's pretty much what you're going to find in most cases. If the numbers aren't exactly as you want them, it's probably more down to the goal swing. So what we were getting with these was very similar spin numbers, but they were coming off the face quicker. So we were getting more ball speed with the 760s, so the ball was going further. So Mark basically said to me, he said, right, these 760 irons are going further, which is great, but we're still not getting that great flight. So he said, what we'll do is we'll use that energy that we're getting and we'll actually increase the loft of the golf clubs. So all of my golf clubs are weakened lofts by one degree. So look at your traditional lofts, these have been weakened back. Now obviously many of the irons that you see on the market now are strengthening the lofts, but we've weakened the lofts. So what that meant is it meant that the ball started to launch a little higher, it started to spin a little bit more, and that lost us a little bit distance with these irons. But because they were going further than my other irons, they were equivalent distance, if that makes sense. So these went longer. We used the extra length to say, well, let's not use the length. Let's make that ball go more up in the air, more spin. So these are going now the same distance as my 770s were, but they are just a higher ball flight, a little bit more spin. And I'm much better at controlling them into the greens. And it's very visual. As soon as I started hitting those shots, the ball started to spin higher. The ball flight was higher. Um, it was in the air for longer, it was a softer drop angle. And you can see that in the numbers there, that the drop angles got much steeper. And that's pretty important when you're going into some flags. So, I'm really happy with those. I think you'll notice on some of these irons from the 7 iron up, there's a little bit of speed foam in here. Um, that helps with that ball spin. That's one of the reasons why we were able to do that. So, I'm absolutely loving those irons. I was using previously X100s. We've stayed with that, so I'm still using the Dynamic Gold X100 shaft. No difference there. Grips are the same. I'm always standard length and I'm always standard lie. That's been the way for about the last 10, 15 years, so that's not going to change. So it's really a case of saying, let's tweak the lofts to get the ball flight a little bit better for me, much better on the course. Right, now we come into an area of the bag that I'm a little bit, uh, I'm struggling with. This was the club I had last year. This is the P790 UDI 2 iron with the Project X Hazardous, Hazardous 6.5 shaft in it. Um, I said to Mark in the fitting, I said, I absolutely love this golf club. I said, I think you'll struggle to get anything better than it. Um, this is my go-to off the tee. If I don't want to hit driver, I just love hitting this. I'm just really confident with it. Love the flight, love the feel. It's one of my favorite clubs. So we hit some shots um, and the data kind of backed that up. It was performing well. I was very happy with it. No reason to change it. However, what he did is he did build me this one, which is the TaylorMade Gapper Low in uh, 17 degrees. And again, with the same shaft, the Hazardous Project X. So this was slightly different. When we hit this, the total distance was very similar. Um, although because of the design of the head, it launched a little higher, the flight was a little higher, and it was a little bit more forgiving on off-center strikes. So when I hit this well, and I hit this well, the distance was quite similar. But this gave a higher flight, this gave a lower flight, and this felt a little bit more forgiving. So I've really got two clubs here which kind of do the same job, but they're slightly different flights. So if I was going to play, let's say, a Lynx golf course where it was pretty windy, this would go in the bags. It's slightly lower flight. But if I was playing a course where it was a little bit softer, maybe, and I feel, felt like maybe I needed to hit this into the greens, then the gap alone would go in the bag. So they're both very, very similar. And if I'm honest with you, if I was going to go and play tomorrow, uh, I don't really know which one would stay in the bag and which one would come out of the bag. They're both very, very good. I didn't think I'd find anything to beat that. I'm not going to say this has beaten it, but it's definitely a good equivalent. Uh, and I've got a couple of options there, so I have to decide next time I play which one is going to stay and which one is going to go. Three wood. Now, I've gone for the M5 three wood. We tried the M6, but the M5 performed a little bit better for me. Um, again, this is a big change. I was using the M3 
three would last year. Pretty happy with it, but again, the flight was pretty low. What we've done with this one is it's the 15 degree hair, but we've lofted it up a little bit, so it's got a little bit more loft, it's got 16 degrees, and we've just moved the movable weight on the bottom as well. So what I'm finding with this, much easier to hit off the ground and get a little bit more flight. Um, looks great, feels great, no real, uh, not really a club I use that much. Um, if I don't hit driver for the tee, I tend to go for that two iron or the gapper. Um, so it's really a case of, if I hit it into the greens, I now feel a lot more comfortable because it's higher flight, a little bit more spin. I feel like I can stop it better. Um, and I just like the way it kind of comes off the face on the M3, which is just a little bit low. Now, obviously that M3, I could have lofted that up as well and probably got the same numbers, but uh, you know, just that adjustability in the hosel there has made this golf club fit into my bag pretty perfectly. Right, on to the driver. M5, and we've got that in 10.5 head but we've got it on a slightly lower setting. So it's only just coming under 10, I think it's 9.75. Um, but this is uh, awesome, love this, absolutely fantastic driver. We've got the weight setting slightly to fade bias, slightly to fade bias, and this one here fairly middle in there. Um, we tried a few different heads, we tried the M6, we tried the M5, we tried the different lofts, and we played around with a few shafts. And what we we're really finding with my old M3 is a little bit similar to the irons, is that there was just not enough spin on it. The launch was a little bit low, there wasn't enough spin on it. It was tended to go a little left, um, and I was just tended to drop out the sky. There wasn't a huge amount of flight on it. Um, and so what Mark did is he gave me a little bit more loft, 10.5, because I was using 9.5 before, but he's just lofted it down a little bit, moved the weights, and put a different shaft in there, which will come to in a moment. It now launches higher, a little bit more spin. And the good thing for me, and these are kind of more feels that you get on the course, but these feels are based on results. I don't feel I'm gonna hit it left. Um, I'm sure I will hit one left at some point, but I don't feel like I'm gonna hit it as far left. I feel like I can swing a little bit harder at it and it's not gonna go massively left, which I sometimes got with my, my old driver. So confidence is huge with this club. If you can stand on the tee, confident you can hit the fairway, that's obviously part of the big part of the, uh, the whole equation. So M5, 10.5, I love it. It comes off the face quicker, it goes longer, flight's better, it's in the air for longer. Everything about this driver is just, just much, much better. In here, we have got the even flow. Get the right round. Even flow, Project X, 6.5 in 65 gram. And again, I absolutely love that. A little bit lighter than the shaft I was using before. Um, again, that just gives me the feel that it's a little bit of an easier club to use, a little bit of an easier club to hit. Um, and I'm absolutely loving it. I've been on the course a number of times with it. And that, I would say, and the irons are the biggest change from my bag from last year. So that is in, that is what is in my golf bag. I also always carry these, the Alignment Pro. So these are alignment sticks, but these always go in my golf bag. They're always just in there. Um, one is like a regular alignment stick, so you can use that for alignment. The other one, very similar, but it has got a couple of hinges on. So it's great for just kind of doing putting drills. You can do it for short, short game drills. You can do it for multiple different things, and there's almost unlimited uses for it. You just have to use your imagination, and the more combinations you can use and set up with that, the more things you can work on. So that just kind of sits in my bag. Whenever I practice, I generally get that out and use that. So that is my golf bag for 2019. Not fully complete because I've got two clubs there which I need to figure out which one's gonna go in. Um, but that's my golf bag this year. Very, very happy with it. Um, so massive thanks to Mark for the fitting. Um, and it really just shows that if you do go to a good fitter, they know what they're talking about. Mark changed the shaft in the wedges. They now feel better. He changed the loft on the irons. They now give a better flight. He gave me an alternative in that kind of area of the bag, which I love. He gave me a three, which I feel more comfortable hitting, and he gave me a driver, which I don't feel I can hit as far left. So, you know, every club in the bag, I feel better with and different with. And that's just due down to, to Mark, knowing the shaft options, knowing the, the numbers, the spin options, what the launch should be, all this kind of stuff, and having the ability to put those changes into these golf clubs. Um, and it's really, really important. So if you are looking to buy a new set of clubs, massively important that you search and look for a really good club fitter. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're the biggest uh, retailer. It just might mean, you know, do some research, speaking to the people at your golf club, speaking to people who've had golf clubs fitted, find out where they went, what was their service like. And sometimes the smaller custom fitters, the independent ones, can often do a better job than the big retailers. Don't go down the route of, if they're a big retailer, they must be the best. Try and make sure you find out who is the best and go and see them. So that is what is in my golf bag for 2019. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, Love to hear your comments down below and also would love you to be a subscriber of my channel. There is a link down below. There's also a clickable link here which will allow you to be a subscriber as well. Let's hope I can use these golf clubs to put some good scores in this year. Uh, and I really hope if you're looking to get golf clubs fitted, you get yourself to a good fitter and you get some benefits like I have this year.